Oh, hi! Uh, today, uh, um, we are going to be talking about teapots and all their various shapes and sizes and styles. As you can see, I have my collection sort of scattered haphazard around here. Um, this is certainly not enough teapots. Um, you definitely need more than one. Um, just This is just going to be a quick overview of what makes a good teapot versus a bad teapot. Different kinds of teapot, what you can use them for. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a wide world. And you think that teapot's a teapot, but it's not really because you can see here there's already like seven different kinds of teapots on here. So uh, yes, doing a quick pan over the uh, the massive collection. Uh, so we'll start with something that a lot of people. This is a uh, my example of a bad teapot. I hate this teapot. Whoops. See, if that had broken, I would not have been sad. Um, this teapot, um, it's, um, originally owned by my mother, and I guess technically still owned. But, I mean, it looks outwardly fine, but one problem you see here is that this spout is not wide enough at the bottom. And you can see that there's not enough of a lip here. If we can compare it to here, this one has more of a lip that allows the water to, when it dribbles, it doesn't just fall over. It comes down here, and then you can get it. And also, notice how the base is wider and that allows more of a flow to get here. So this teapot pours way better than this teapot. This teapot dribbles. Um, it doesn't have a very good filter in it. It's got kind of a seven hole sort of filter. It's actually five. five. whatever. It's usually that and they're not lined up either. So um, so this, yeah, this teapot also lacks what this one has which is this little hole in the lid. Now the hole in the lid is so that you can see no hole. The hole in the lid is so that air can get in there, push the tea out, and it keeps it nice and flowing. So this teapot, and also the lid falls off too, so this teapot is a bad teapot. So when you're buying a teapot, you see something like this, with no hole in the lid, a crummy spout like that, uh, just don't waste your money. So we have here a good teapot. Uh, this one is almost sort of a Japanese style with the lid coming over here and also the plums on the side here, the plum blossoms. Um, so this teapot is, outwardly has the same features, but this one's a quite a bit better. It has the hole in the lid, it pours better, it has a better action like this. I actually like teapots a lot that have this on here, so you can pour it like this and still hold the lid on. Um, this is an example of a good teapot, and uh, so this is the sort of thing you should be looking for. Um, moving on, uh, glass teapots are quite popular. Uh, I personally don't find them that useful for actually brewing tea, serious tea. They're good for storing it, like as a serving pitcher, so you brew in something like this, and then you pour in here, and then you can look at it. Um, another good thing with glass teapots is that they have are clear, and so you can put flowering teas in them. Now, flowering teas, as you might have seen, they start off as little balls, and then they open up and reveal the artistry that has gone into making the flowering tea. Um, flowering teas sometimes tastes pretty good. Mostly they're just more like a centerpiece or a conversation piece where everybody watches it unfold. It is quite nice. Um, and I guess noticing that there's this giant basket infuser here, I'll talk about basket infusers in just a minute. Uh, yeah, well, I can talk about it now. Basket infusers are convenient, but they don't make good tea. Uh, the, the leaves, no matter how big the basket infuser is, the leaves just do not have a chance to open up and fully undergo what is what we call the agony of the leaves, which is where they twist open. It's a real term, smirking camera woman. It opens up and it, they twist open and they release all their goodness and it's just a lovely thing that can happen in a basket infuser. So unless you're, if you're doing an herbal where it doesn't really matter if they can move around or whatever, basket infusers are great. But otherwise, uh, the best way to avoid having your tea sitting in there too long is to have two teapots. You brew in one, I usually brew in this one, you brew in one and you decant it into another one of an equal size, and that way the tea has an opportunity to move around, but it doesn't. the tea doesn't sit in there while you're pouring it into your cups and get over-brewed and taste crappy. So that's the two teapot method, and teapots are cheap. I mean, these, these teapots were probably both $15 or something like that at uh, Stokes or an appropriate housewares company. Um, another glass teapot that I have is this little one. I got this for oolongs. And then I realized that it actually doesn't brew long that well because it doesn't hold heat that well. But you can see it has a little uh, spring sort of wire filter in there. I don't know how well that shows up. 
But I use this mostly as just a serving pitcher, again, like this one, except on a smaller scale. Um, yeah, a little glass teapot like this is not particularly useful, but uh, I mean, it's useful as a serving pitcher when you're using a guy once. Uh, moving on to, uh, this, these are a little interesting, you get these tea for ones they're called, where it has the cup on the bottom, and then you just lift the teapot up like this. Um, this one doesn't have a hole in the lid, but it pours, it pours okay. I mean, the lid has a tendency to fall off and it's kind of hard to hold, but, um, generally you fill it up with hot water, you sit it, or tea, and you set it there and then the cup gets warmed up, which is what you should always have, is all these things should be pre-warmed and then you pour it in here. Um, you kind of have to guess because if you fill this right up, then it overflows the cup. So you put, or if you're cooling water, say for like a green tea, which this actually works quite well for you, fill it up just to the cup and you pour it through a funnel or something like that. And then you have your good, your good tea and your water is at a correct temperature. Um, I like this thing a lot. It was like $4 or something like that off of Amazon. Uh, and the color is pretty groovy. Uh, so these things are actually kind of useful. You just have to kind of get used to them, uh, kind of how they work, and you can't fill them right up as you're would probably instinctively do. Right? So. Uh, moving on, this is actually a smaller version of this. Uh, it came with a basket strainer, as you can see here. I don't use it. Um, so this teapot is interesting in that it does not have a filter on the inside. So, when using, uh, sometimes you get this in these little teapots. I would say this is Japanese style too, but it's probably made in China, as pretty much everything is. So basically, then the batch strainer becomes more useful because then you pour through it and then you catch all the leaves and then you just put them back into your serving pitcher, which I will uh, explain in a minute. Uh, serving pitchers are really useful, they're worth the money. Uh, but this teapot has served me well, it's a pretty good teapot. Um, so this is another kind of style, and you can see the spout big at the bottom there with the top. Doesn't dribble, good pour. Japanese teapot, so this is called a Kyusu, as you can see it's got the handle on the side. Uh, and also this, this one is a really good one, it's got on uh, the low spout and the narrow part. Hole in the lid. Um, as you can see inside the Japanese teapots, we usually have these wire mesh, because it's Japanese tea leaves tend to be kind of small, so the holes don't really work, so it has this wire mesh inside. Um, use these mostly for brewing Japanese teas, obviously. Japanese teas do really well in these things, and um, the handle makes it a lot easier to pour out. And then finally we have these Yixing teapots, and as you can see this thing is itsy bitsy, it's almost as small as this thing. But this is a serious teapot, um, it's made of Yixing clay. Um, Yixing clay deserves its own video, and it will get its own video, but as you can see, this is about the size you want for a Yixing teapot. Um, they're quite small, they have the hole in the lid, um, and a little handle here, a very short spout, and these are useful, very useful for certain kinds of Chinese tea, but again, the Yixing is going to be getting its own video, and um, yes, but this is about the right size, and Yixing pots are very mysterious, and require a lot of work, and they're very expensive. This was an $80 teapot for something this tiny. So that's a quick overview of teapots. I'm not sure, considering how fast I was going, if it was useful, but you can let me know. And um, yes, we'll see you next time.